Good morning. Welcome, welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Community on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We especially send out a warm welcome to all who are here today and those watching from home and to all who are visiting. Please remember to have at least three seats between you and the next person who is not of your household. Wear your mask and wash your hands. Thank you. Adoration uh, to the Blessed Sacrament every Tuesday at St. Michael's from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. with confessions and, and every Friday from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. with confessions at St. Jude the Apostle. In the entrance to the church, you will find St. Michael the Archangel's vitality report, vitality report for those who did not receive the report via their email. This report covers a span of the last five years. I would like you to thank our trustees, Ann Kowalczyk and Bob Long, and all those who work so diligently and accurately on this report. The purpose for this report, the first is accurately show the information regarding the life of the parish, and the second is to humbly ask you to prayerfully consider donating your time, talent, and treasure to the future vitality of our parish. The parishes of St. Jude the Apostle and St. Michael the Archangel will be collecting much needed items for moms and their new babies served by Catholic Charities of Albany Diocese Agency, the community, attorney services, Flyers can be found in the gathering area of much needed items. We remember in our prayers, Melinda Kerwin, Paula Legato, Gerald Daniels, Charlie Fernandez. Let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel for the men and women who served in our armed forces. St. Michael the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Yeah. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the, the power of God, thrust into all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. At this time, let us take a few moments to quiet our hearts and minds in a period of sacred silence. Good morning. Our entrance hymn this morning is Sing with All the Saints in Glory. Please stand and greet our celebrant, Father Chichester. Death and sorrow, its dark story. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, every soul should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living springs of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthy to receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God cleanse us from our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them, with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the 
the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth before him shall bend all who go down into the dust i will to him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born, the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the ascent. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him. In whatever our hearts condemn, for God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of, the, of, of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Those who keep, keep his commandments remain in him and he in them and the way we know th that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every one that does, he prunes it, so it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During the Last Supper, Jesus has this long extended discourse with his disciples. And after he explains to them that he's going to leave them, not leave them alone. He'll provide them an advocate. He'll not leave them orphans, as it were. He explains in this second part of the discourse, the first part of which we heard today, how his disciples must abide in his love and remain in him against all the powerful forces of the world and Satan himself who will try to separate the disciples from the love of God. In the beginning of this discourse, Jesus gives us this uh, meditation offering on himself as the vine planted in the vineyard of the Father. When Jesus is made the new vine, he essentially stands in contrast to the vine of the Israelites that was planted by the Father in the Old Testament. The same vine about whom the scriptures testify failed to produce good fruit. And we know how over time the Israelites again and again abandoned the Lord. They were left to be scattered and very nearly destroyed. So Jesus then is the true vine. He identifies himself as such, the true vine. The vine, the vine which will always do the Father's will. And in doing the Father's will always and perfectly, will bring the fullness of life and fullness of joy that everyone truly desires. Israel could not do it. Jesus can and does. We know well that the fullness of humanity and the fullness fullness of life and joy for humanity, which that desire is in our hearts, becomes possible only when we are grafted to that vine and become the branch. That grafting takes place in our baptism. And once grafted, disciples must bear fruit. It becomes our responsibility. Or being useless, as Jesus tells us, the Father will 
what? Remove them from the vine, and they will be left out to be burned. The responsibility for us in this metaphor is to be useful, to bear fruit for God the Father, for Jesus, which is nothing other than a participation in the divine life, out of which will come the salvation of many souls and the glorification of the Father. St. John reminds us in the letter that we heard this morning that the practicing of the commandments is the sign that we remain in his love. When we do the Lord's will and fulfill the commandments, all of them, love God with your whole strength, your mind, your heart, love your neighbor as yourself, and of all the Ten Commandments and everything that follows therefrom. If we're living the commandments, then we're abiding. It's a sign that we're abiding in the love of the Lord, that we're remaining in him, that we are firmly gra grafted to the vine, and not only firmly grafted, but the love of Christ, which is the sap of the vine, permeates the branches. Permeates the branches. And Jesus spent, what, three years, right, preparing his disciples, pruning them. What do you do when you prune? You get rid of all the excess branches, all the stuff that gets in the way of a given plant from growing and truly becoming what it's supposed to be. In us, the pruning is the removal of, and the cutting away of all of our sinful tendencies, all of our attachments to sin, all the things that get in the way of us from bearing fruit. That pruning has to take place if we are to not only live the commandments, but bear much fruit. So we must remain close to the vine. And so if the commandments are the sign of the abiding in, what is the abiding in? How does it unfold for us? Well, I offer to you that the number one way of abiding in the Lord is to come into his presence in the blessed, in the most blessed sacrament, as he is here in every tabernacle throughout the world. The number one way. Of course, the reception of him in the Mass, in the most holy Eucharist, where he dwells for us in this intensity of his love for 10 or 15 minutes, is par excellence the moment of abiding. But it can be squandered really easily. He can come into us and we cannot be with him at all. But here in the tabernacle, the Lord is present and has made himself available to his people for the millennia so that we can actually come and abide in his presence. And I'd like to read to you a little passage from um, called Insinu Jesu. It's this monk who was receiving in the private revelations, these words of Jesus. Jesus says this to him about his presence in the Eucharist. He says, I live in the sacrament of my love as I live in heaven, in a ceaseless state of intercession for all who believe in me and come to me with the weight of life's burdens and sorrows. There is nothing that I will not do for the soul that approaches with confidence. For this reason, I did not wish to remain present in the sacrament. For this reason, I did wish to remain present in the sacrament of my love until the end of time, so that souls might know where to find me and approach me more easily, certain of being heard and trusting in the mercy of my heart for a world marked by suffering and ravaged by sin. 
Jesus asks this question of the monk and of us as well. Do souls believe in my real presence in the tabernacles of my church? Have they altogether, altogether forgotten who I am and where I am to be found? Has the faith of my priests in the, in the sacrament of my love grown so tepid and so weak that the souls entrusted them have lost the simple instinct of a believing heart? That is, to seek me out in the most holy Eucharist and to abide in my presence, loving me and allowing me to love freely those who come to me, to heal their wounds, to draw them into the sanctuary of my open side. The emptiness of my churches is an affront to my love to the love that compelled me to give myself by the hands of my priests under the forms of bread and wine so that no one might perish from hunger or thirst on the road to eternity. I am not distant from souls in need. I have made myself close to them, as close as the nearest tabernacle. Only my friends would understand this. My churches would be full. We want to have the strength to live out the commandments, which are that sign that we abide in the love of the Lord. This is where we come. It's where we must come. The place where the love of God dwells. We can abide, rest in that love will truly transform and heal and strengthen. It's a serious thing to do. A serious thing to do. We have the beautiful example of Mary, Mother of God. And in this month of May, we honor her in a special way. Mary was the first tabernacle on earth in which God dwelt bodily. She was able to abide with him as he in her, not just nine months, for his whole life. That's how close Mary was to her son and desired to be with him. That's what led her to the foot of the cross. We too are called by the Lord to come and abide in his presence, to allow the sap of his love to bear fruit in us. Apart from him, we bear little fruit. So my friends, draw close to him, especially here, hidden behind the veil of bread and wine, present in this tabernacle. He will do much with us. And out of the time that we lovingly spend with him, he will make this branch of ours grow and bear much fruit. Together, my brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary 
and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's loving mercy, we are confident that he will give us whatever we ask, and so we bring to him all of our prayers and needs. For the church, that our faith may deepen, our hope be strengthened, and our love abound as we draw our strength from Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those chosen by the Lord to go and bear fruit as priests, deacons, and in consecrated life, that they will respond to his love with conviction in their vocations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those with disabilities, that people around them will recognize that every person is a good and perfect gift and treat them accordingly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of this parish who received their first communion yesterday, May their families and their children continue to be nourished at the table of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing pruning through loss, transition, or change, that God will give them strength, guide them, and help them find courage, support, and hope through fellow believers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, especially those who, with severe illnesses, that the Spirit of God will renew the gift of life within them and bring healing to their mind, body, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved deceased, especially those who are closest to our hearts. And for Melinda Kerwin, Paula Legato, and Gerald Daniels, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Mary Phyllis Coomgen, whose funeral was last week. May they live forever in the presence of our risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we are the fruit of your Son's vine. Grant our prayers, which we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Normally we would take up our collection at this time. The collection boxes are at the door for all of those who are present here today. And for those of you who wish to sign up for electronic giving, well, now you know the spiel. You can sign up online. You can go to the website, download the form, fill it out, hand it in. Or you can make an instant donation via the app or the website by pressing the donate button. In any way that you have been so generously supporting our parish, thank you very much. Please join in our preparation hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, the one who calls me home. I long to see God face to face, to see with my own eyes. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I shall rise again. I know that my 
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in our communion hymn, Many and Great.
let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two brief announcements. The first is that we are once again holding our um, drive for the children and mothers uh, for our local community. The bassinet is out there in the lobby to remind you. So if you wish to bring any of the items that they can most seri seriously need, uh, please do so. And then the other thing is that this Wednesday, May 5th, I believe, um, uh, under the leadership of John, uh, let's say his last name properly, Bolo, <laughs> apologize, apologies, John. Um, he's gonna begin for us um, uh, the Liturgy of the Hours on the first Wednesday of every month. It's gonna be live streamed. There's a little yellow flyer in the back. You can just sign on and pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Liturgy of the Hours is the, one of the universal prayers of the church, uh, which all priests, religious, and many laity throughout the world pray every single day. And I believe he'll be praying either evening prayer or night prayer um, on each of those first Wednesdays. So you're welcome to join and begin to learn if you've never prayed the Liturgy of the Hours before, this incredibly rich and beautiful prayer of the psalms and readings and canticles. That's all I have for you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming word, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom. Make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. A message ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Before we go, someone here turns the ripe age of 39 today. I'll give you a hint. He just said the mass. <laughs> so happy birthday is in order. Today is the real birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Father Zach. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, everyone. Say a prayer for me, if you would, please. Also, at the last Mass, I said that there are Easter plants out under the counter by the door going into the hall in the back. Uh, you're free to take those if you want. However, there was some lady, she went out and took one of the big green plants from in front of the cross, and I had to go chasing her out in the parking lot. <laughs> Our closing hymn is Be Joyful, Mary, Heavenly Queen. Be joyful, Mary, heavenly queen. Be joyful, Mary. Your son who died was.